Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. My name is Tony Brienne, and my channel is all about beauty, fashion, and discovery. And if you guys want to see more content from me, please go ahead and click that subscribe button right now down below. So guys, um, I don't know if y'all may have seen my Instagram post. I don't know if some of y'all follow me on Instagram or don't, but if you don't, you really should go check out my Instagram. It is linked down below in my description box. But I said that I was not going to be posting a video this week, hence why I did not have a video up on Thursday, because of everything going on with the Black Lives Matter movement. But... I didn't want to just not post anything so I still know you guys like to watch my content and I like to post videos as well so I wanted to do something that was geared towards the Black Lives Matter movement and especially something that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about being a black woman, I'm passionate about being black, I'm passionate about my people so I decided that I wanted to share stories about people that don't have justice served um, and I want to start off with the story of Kendrick Johnson. This story I have done research on since I was probably like in a freshman in high school. It gives me the hives, the spooks, whatever you want to call it every single time I hear the story so I decided like let's just talk about Kendrick Johnson and to just give his story a little bit more attention than it already has. So I feel like a lot of people still don't know his story. I've been seeing it float around Twitter a little bit but I wouldn't give you guys a full story. I did my research so let's just get you into this video. Kendrick Johnson was 17 years old before he passed away. Kendrick loved football. He was the baby of his family and his mom Jacqueline said he always kept them on their toes. Kendrick Johnson died January 10th 2013. Kendrick Johnson's body was found rolled up in a gym mat by his other schoolmates. Mind you, he was found dead 21 hours later. Kendrick Johnson's initial autopsy said that this death was accidental, but his family and many others in the town and many others that heard the story think otherwise. They call this death accidental because they said that Kendrick basically reached into a mat to grab his shoe and he got stuck in it. But that sounds a little bit off because the mat that he was trying to get into um, the circle of the mat, like say a mat, a mat, not map, a mat is wrapped around. Um, the center of it was only about 14.5 inches wide, but Kendrick's shoulders were 17.5 inches wide. So how could he have gotten into that mat without being shoved in? Kendrick's mom, Jacqueline, also felt that this death was not accidental because she stated that her son did get into an altercation prior to his death. So his mom was thinking that someone possibly beat him to death and left him in the mat to be discovered later on. Kendrick Johnson's family's attorney says that he believes that this death was a cover-up. They thought this because the fact that they said that this death was accidental when it clearly wasn't, that just rang a few bells. So this caused the family to exhume Kendrick's body a few months after his death and get another autopsy. So from the second autopsy, they noticed that the paramedics did say when they initially saw his body that there was bruising all over his body. But in the original autopsy, that wasn't stated. The paramedic statement was not in the autopsy. They also said that Kendrick's face was extremely bruised up. I'm going to show you guys the photos. Let me just tell you they're very graphic and they're a little bit disturbing if you want to skip past this part. But these are the photos. And he had cuts all over his knuckles, which could very well mean that he did get in a fight like Jacqueline stated that he was in. The autopsy that the family had after they exhumed his body stated that Kendrick died from blunt force trauma to the head. So let's get into the evidence of this case. So there was a gray hoodie near the body, but investigators did not test that hoodie for blood and to see if it matched Kendrick's. They did find a Nike sneaker that appeared to have blood on it, but they said that whatever was on the sneaker was not blood. They tested it and they said that wasn't the case. There was also stains of blood on the wall and they did get that blood tested. However, they said that it wasn't Kendrick's blood. And also there was tissues with blood on it, but they said that it was from a girl that had an accident um, from the school a little bit earlier. What also makes this case odd and why it could be seen as a cover-up, there was 36 cameras in the school, correct? Four cameras in the gym. However, where Kendrick's body was found, those cameras were said to be blurry and unusable, which seems a bit odd as there were several cameras all over the school, but of course the cameras that were needed to see footage we couldn't see anything. The four cameras in the gym were missing over an hour of footage before and after Kendrick entered the gym and there were timestamps missing as well. So that either means that somebody removed that footage or the camera did it by itself. You take your pick. More evidence to the cameras being tampered with is that the camera footage literally jumped to just completely different students playing in the gym. It was like a Two students, I believe, and then a group of students playing in the gym after. 
hours for each camera. So our map 1900 plus hours. Now we do have a clip of what's happening inside the gym uh, at the moment that Kendrick Johnson walks in. Remember, the school's attorney says that there was, were other minors in the gym. Uh, those minors, we have blurred them to protect their uh, identity, but they're playing basketball near the camera. Uh, we see Kendrick run at the bottom of the screen to the far side of the court. Now, we know that that's where the mats are, and we know this is just a few minutes before, uh, according to police, that's when he went inside the mat. Investigators were also seen in the photos that they were taking of Kendrick's body for evidence, not wearing any protective shoes. So they're supposed to wear something on their shoes to not contaminate evidence. And they did not have that on. Investigators of the crime scene also called the coroner's office six hours after they found Kendrick's body when he was obviously dead because the students that discovered his body and the gym teacher as well, there was a gym teacher with them. They said that he was dead because they were trying to move him out and it was visible that he was dead. So here's some more evidence of this leading up to being a non-accidental death. So obviously we got into the cuts on his knuckles, which says that there was probably a fight and somebody beat him to death and killed him and tried to cover it up. There was his broad shoulders not fitting in between the mat because he had to have been shoved in. He couldn't naturally fit into a mat and try and grab a shoe. It was impossible. And Kendrick's dad also stated that Kendrick always kept his nails very long, but when they saw his body, his nails were cut down very short, which is crucial to, for finding skin DNA. Skin DNA gets stuck in nails all the time, so if he was scratching or fighting for his life, you'd be able to find that and find someone who, find whoever the last person or whoever's DNA would be inside his nails. So that's a possibility why his nails were cut short. And like I said before, his skin was extremely bruised up. It was blackened, it was puffy as if he got in a fight. His death was ruled as positional asphyxia but how his face looked it just doesn't it it makes no sense how that could have been positional asphyxia which is basically suffocation he suffocated in the mat and after Kendrick's body was exhumed the coroner noticed that his body was stuffed with newspaper and the organs were just missing and even when they asked where the organs were they just said that they were discarded they had no answer as to where the organs were which leads to more evidence of this being a homicide case so once again, Kendrick's death is ruled as accidental and that he's basically suffocated. But with all the evidence, it's pretty clear that this boy was killed. Kendrick would have been about 24 now and his life was taken from him. We don't know what happened. There's no truth. Apparently some people have said that he was in a fight with two other um, white students at his school. Some people said that it was over a girl. Who knows? And um, apparently one of those students, their father was the sheriff of this said city and they may have covered it up. I'm not sure but it is quite odd and people want to reopen this case. I'm going to be leaving links down below for petitions to reopen Kendrick's case because it does sound awfully odd and it's upsetting because if his life was taken away from him he deserves justice. His parents and family members are still fighting for him and I think we should as well because it just it doesn't seem right and I always say a mother knows a mother knows if in her heart and soul is something was fixated with his death so if you guys like this video, please give this video a big old thumbs up. If you guys want me to do more videos like this, which I plan to do anyway, please leave comments down below. Any other evidence or anything I'm missing, please leave that down below as well in the comment section so we can further educate ourselves about Kendrick's death. Share this video as well and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Please check out all the links of petitions in my bio, not my bio, <laughs> in the description box if you guys want to help reopen his case. And I will see you all in my next video. Love you guys. Bye.